Hello and welcome to Last Time On. This is the podcast for people who want to watch all of this prestige television, but who's got time for it? I know I don't. Uh, guys, I, I actually do have time today, but we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to make it quick because I got my my BJ break in forty five minutes. Let's let's Your get this fifteen one. minute BJ break, <laughs> yes, surrounded by minutes. five minute smoke breaks, preceded <laughs> by a five minute bathroom break. Of course you memorized it, Jafar. I paused it and took notes. <laughs> we'll talk later. This is how we know Lunch Lip Fair. does not have lactose intolerance. <laughs> so, yeah, I that am was Ben. Me. I'm Victor. Welcome back to Last Time On, everyone. <laughs> and we're here with Shameless Season 4, Episode 9. Guys. Uh, <sighs> the, legend of, the Legend of Bonnie and, and Carl. That's what yeah, the name's called, It's right? the name of the episode. Yeah. For no reason yes. whatsoever, um, we'll we'll get to that too. But this this show, this show is hurting me. Ben, I didn't know Ben's if Laura like knew this show was going to hurt me as much as it did. <laughs> Beth knew. Beth Which knew part this show specifically did it, did it hurt you? <laughs> Everything about this show hurts me. I hate this show. Oh my god, I am loving it. <laughs> if if we had do overs, I would mm-hmm. do a do over. I hate this show so much. I'm actually introducing a new rule to the game at the end of this episode. Oh, really? What's the new rule? Uh, at the end of this episode. Oh, come on. Well, Victor, <laughs> don't worry about it because he can't unilaterally add a rule. So, uh... do we have? To... Oh, that's right. We we all have to vote on it, right? Mm-hmm. To, to the, make the rule. The, the rule has voting <laughs> built into it, Ben. Oh God. <laughs> don't right. worry about that. We'll. And honestly, you're probably going to agree with me. So we're not going to worry about it for now. But Vic, you asked us to grab a deck of cards before we recorded. I did. I did. Now, for the listeners at home who may not be aware, Jafer hosts another podcast that is a Babylon 5 podcast called Who Are You? I do. And it's wrapping up. And they play a really fun game on there. And I decided we're going to play the game here on Last Time On. So, gentlemen, it's time for... Plot poker. What's the game? Five cards draw, juice is wild. And, don't and the sky's a limit. I don't understand how this could possibly work with a deck of cards. Aha, uh-huh. well, I just dropped a link in the Discord. Oh no. You don't need to follow along in in, in the with the spreadsheet, but there's like... there's only characters. Or no wait, there's more. Yeah, no, there's a lot. There's okay, a lot. so we yeah. need one card from each deck. No, no, no. You, you shuffle, you shuffle your deck. Yeah, Sh- shuffle it up. Get some good shuffling going on okay. here. Okay, I'm shuffling. And, yep, you're gonna the day I'm draw shuffling. yourself. <laughs> I'm draw yourself out five cards. I'm shuffling my uh, limited like... edition Club Nintendo gold cards. Where oh my Mario god, I have to see these. Is king. Ooh. Dude, that's They're partially dope. see-through. They're very <laughs> pretty. Okay. And the way this is going to work is this for this just to also this this round of plot poker is going to prove the efficacy of our pending patent pending last time on formula for becoming an expert in a television series in our in a in a short compressed amount of time. I really need to do that. Because this is for, we're doing plot poker for Stargate SG-1. Okay. Since we are all now certified, bona fide, electrified experts in Stargate SG-1 because we LTO'd our way through it. (laughs) Okay. So go ahead and uh, draw draw yourself out. Deal yourself five cards. I got my five cards. Can I look at them? Yeah, yeah, totally. And wow. Okay. And the way this is going to work is whoever has the highest card will start off. And you can, and you know what? You can go ahead and, and just like in regular poker, you can give some cards back and draw yourself. But, you know, just once. You can, Do I get a bonus if I've got a straight? I don't know. We're, I'm, I'm, just, I'm figuring this out. <laughs> but whoever has the highest card will go first. And you, what you will do is you will give us the first act of an episode, right? And you have to use at least three of your cards to give us the first act of the episode. Then 
you pass the ball to one of us, to one of the other two hosts. Okay. So, I got... Okay, so let me see what I got here. Ten of spades, which is Anubis. Ten of diamonds, which is Apophis. Oh, that's right. I made tens all the bad guys. And the ten of hearts, which is Hathor. Ooh, that might be fun. And then a uh, six of hearts. Six of hearts is Jurisdiction, jurisdiction friction. friction. Because Fr- friction. I also have the six it should of be. hearts. <laughs> Ooh, this actually will work out pretty good. And the eight of clubs... Which is Naquadria. Oh, you know what? I'm going to stick with this hand. I can do stuff with this hand. So we uh, we, right. we use three cards to make a, a part a, the next chunk of the plot? Yeah, yeah. Minimum of three cards. Yeah. Okay. Minimum of three cards? We can go over? You can. Yeah, you can go crazy with it. So so my highest card's a 10. What, what's your highest card, Ben? Ace. Okay, you got an ace? All right. I've got do you have an ace? No. Okay, cool. All right, so Ben... You're going to start us off. So I drew the Ace of Diamonds, the Ace of Hearts, Ace of the, the Ten of Ori, Hearts, the, the Ten Asgard. of Diamonds, Seven of Diamonds, and the Five of Spades. So what I am going to say <laughs> is we run into a problem. You see, <laughs> we've got Hathor. Uh-huh. And Hathor, having used some ancient technologies has Mm -hmm. revealed that um, using a Chekhov's plot device, they are able to bring a historical figure to the present who was an alien. All right. So uh, what's the Chekhov's plot device, though? So the Chekhov's Chekhov's (laughs) plot device is the Reluminator. And what it has done (laughs) is it finds this person who was gone, um, who has passed, and brings them from the moment of their of their passing to now but rejuvenated so they are now from they have all of their memories it is them from the moment of their death but now they are here in the present and no longer dying they are in their physical prime nice nice so who are you going to pass pass the ball to me or Jafer? i'm going to pass it to Jafer so you can bring us home all right oh, i have i <laughs> Can we pass to Vic? Because I solely drew a end of episode hand. Oh, okay. okay. Then Vic I, it I, is. I guess I can make. Uh, I guess perfect. I can make it work. But... No, no, no. I got it. I got it. Uh, too okay. late. I'm going. Okay. <laughs> so he's so excited. Hathor resummons this historical figure. Did you say who? Or... I did not. I was leaving it up to you. Oh, okay. This episode, they're going to be mysterious about it. All we know is it's someone important from the past, and Hathor is at the brink of of powering up the Reluminator to a hundred percent. And just as she's about to uh, illuminate, illuminate, <laughs> yeah, illu- go full illumination, Apophis and Anubis warp in, and they're like, yeah. "Hathor, we picked this up on our our your energy spikes because she's using a massive amount of Naquadria to power this device." And according to the ancient treaty of of the ancients, <laughs> <laughs> the ancient treaty of the ancients. You have to cut us in on this. The Naquadria belongs to me, Apophis. And Anubis is like, no, it belongs to me, Anubis. And they get into some real friction here over over who who has the rights to the Naquadria and, ergo, who has the rights to bring the Reluminator back online. And, Javert, your turn. <laughs> so this entire time this is going on with Hath 4, we, you notice that we haven't talked about the team. Right. <laughs> right. The team is notably absent for the first two thirds of this episode. And we find that they have been at Area 51. They yeah. are aware of all of the stuff going on right now. Like, we, we get to them, like, and it's like the, ep- the whole episode, they've just been, like, listening in. Like, they've had a bug on Hath for this entire time. They know everything that's going on. And so they start diving through antiques that they have (laughs) stored at area 51 looking for the answer to apophis and anubis getting the reluminator (laughs) reluminated and they find the answer it's not the answer they were hoping for but in area 51 in the antiques to a to be continued. Oh, they find a planet killer.
<laughs> it's an antique planet killer. Antique planet killer that's been at Area 51 the whole time. <laughs> nice. Invented by Thomas Edison. That's who's in the Illuminator. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Edison invented a planet killer. All right. Well, guys, what do we think on a scale of one to seven chevrons? How is this episode that we made? <laughs> Damn it. Why didn't we rate episodes on one to seven chevrons? <laughs> I said. I know. Oh, I... was it Ben's idea? Is that why we didn't do it? That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> okay. That checks out. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. This episode's the bomb, dude. It's got everything. It's got a bomb. <laughs> yeah. I'm giving it a seven, man. I like it. Yeah, I'd watch this episode. I might be a little biased because this whole thing was my idea. I don't know. We'll, know, we'll see what happens in part two. Can they can they bring it home? <laughs> the best thing about this is the next time we do it, it will not be the part two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, if, this, if this is fun, I was going to make another one for Breaking Bad, another one for... Um, in a, Enter the fun. Badlands. This yeah, is fun. Maybe fun. fun. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed, listener. <laughs> and if you're in the Discord, you can play along at home because Vic posted this in the general channel and not the yeah. host notes thing that we use for these things normally. Yeah, so no, that was intentional. Can see it. Yeah. I'm trying to get the listeners involved here more in the, yeah, the Discord. Get involved, <laughs> listeners. Get in, the, get in the comments. Get in those comments. <laughs> um, but Speaking of getting in the comments that works we got shameless season four episode <laughs> the ballad of bonnie and carl now it's the legend but i, I like i like ballad better yeah More i've epic. got a bunch of things we could do to make this episode better i've got a bunch of things we could do to make this show better oh i love it i'm loving this show man it's such a <laughs> like like cancel it so Ah, we open. I like it. Our little intro is Frank, who is not doing well, and no. he takes oh, us shit, to our man. skip recap button. Frank looks like one of the extras from The Walking Dead. Man, he looks like shit. Yeah, <laughs> this is like I. We come from a place of knowledge. We know this show gets eleven seasons. I was like, right. how yeah. is how is he making it? <laughs> I've yeah. I, I've got some some ideas of how he does, and I'm just like. Which is the worst thing that I can imagine, uh, because that's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, listeners at home, if you haven't uh, watched this episode yet, it opens. It starts off with Frank saying, "Here's what you missed last week," and he is he he looks like death. He seriously, he looks like he's gonna. He looks like a corpse. Mm-hmm. This whole lying in bed with an oxygen like machine. Um, yeah, it's and then it's, but we open in media yeah. shower. And we see that Fiona has a tracker on. The ankle in, bracelet. What do you have, Ben? In media shower. In media shower. <laughs> it says in media shower. I said the same thing. <laughs> I actually, I was actually prepared to correct you, Ben. Oh? I thought you were going to say in media <laughs> booty. And I was going to correct you that that is not the case with Emmy Rosam. But. Hmm? You said, we, we see your butt. Yeah. It, th- there's butt, but there's not booty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a little, man, that ain't no man's butt. <laughs> I was I was prepared to argue at this point to whether or not this counts as nudity for my prediction points. But that's a moot point because we get full nudity later. So let's continue. Yep. So we know that from later in the episode that her charge was narcotics. That's what's got her in trouble here. We know that it involves a guy named Eric who she confronts at the end of the episode. I thought it was Mike. Mm-hmm. I wrote down Eric. I don't remember. Uh, okay, I don't well, think it matters. Yeah. We, yeah. It doesn't matter for... Well, we'll I there. guess we should pick a name for this guy. Whether or not we're right, I don't give a shit. At the very least, when, <sighs> when she is confront at her old workplace and confront confronted by her old boss, she sa- the boss says, you ruined my brother Mike's life. Oh, it's oh. probably Mike. I don't know. There might Eric be more guys. I mean, who knows? Hmm. Um, I'm not going to concern. We're going to assume that's Mike because that was my intention. So we know that Mike is involved. <laughs> we get a little bit of story. But what we don't hear anything about is how she got arrested. No. The actual yeah. circumstance of her arrest. So, gentlemen, if I may, let's get weird with it. Let's get 
was not prepared for this. I was not prepared uh, for anything, actually. So exactly like, how we like um, it here. <laughs> All right. Well, well, <laughs> Vic is figuring this out. I'm good to go. All right, go, go for, for it. it go for it, Ben. The Gallagher's got caught up in a scam. And as part of this, they were, they they found out because somebody was inspired by the fact that among Nicolas Cage's repossessed possessions was a stolen T-Rex skeleton. Um, and so they come up with the idea that, you know what people will pay a ton of money for? Dinosaur bones. And you know what's cheap? Fake dinosaur bones. So they are trying to scam people by selling real dinosaur fossils, not knowing that the fake dinosaur fossils that they are trying to import using the connections from Fiona and her, I guess, I believe it's some sort of cup sales business. They're they're shipping it through there, not knowing that the place that they were buying it from was actually using these fake dinosaurs as a way to smuggle drugs. So they get caught thinking, oh no, we're about to get caught selling fake dinosaur bones. And suddenly it's, oh no, we're caught with drugs. <laughs> and That's... things suddenly get much, much worse. I like that, Ben, but it ignores a central conceit of the show and that is regardless of what's going on everything is frank's fault so with that in mind is it? Uh, i don't know it's seeming like it's all of their faults because they're all horrible people fiona's kind of the least horrible <laughs> she's still all, pretty I horrible i mean what, what has she done so far though like, I can't really think of much besides, you know, screwing someone's husband, apparently. And there's but, been some assaults you know. and some theft and... Yeah, she did steal stuff from the hotel, yeah. Uh, being the least spoiled in a bag of rotten apples does not mean <laughs> you are a good apple. <laughs> that, Regardless, is, uh, that is unfortunate. Frank's true. fault. So, uh, we know Eric's involved, um... You know, Ben, I did like the dinosaur smuggling stuff, so I'm just going to co-opt <laughs> that. Um, and <laughs> it's dinosaur bones. They're filled with drugs. And they find out, tragically, too late, just like they do for your story. The only difference is this all comes down. The police are notified in the first place because there is a bounty on a dinosaur, dinosaur bone smuggler. <laughs> and, or a, a drug smuggler, not a dinosaur bone smuggler. And Frank uh, overhears something at the alibi, not realizing that it is j related to the dinosaur bone smuggling that his kids are engaging in that he is aware of. And so he goes to collect the anonymous tip bounty for the drugs and in turn ruins everything for Fiona and sends her to jail. Okay, well, mine doesn't have anything to do with dinosaurs, but, but I'm going to say Ooh. that. So Fiona, it's, <laughs> I think we established that Fiona had a legitimate job at an, at an office somewhere selling cups, apparently. I'm, I'm thinking maybe she was like selling paper cups in bulk to, I don't know, corporations, businesses or whatever. That's what it seems like. But while she was there, she started having a little office romance with Mike slash Eric maybe Mike and Eric, and they decide to, you know, after making a big sale, they go out to a Motley Crue concert. Ooh. Are they still alive? Are they? When this uh, was made, surely, probably. They, okay. had, a, they had a late, uh, they had like a know. 2010s still revival, still. didn't they? Maybe. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. So while they're at this concert, Mike, Mike, Eric, and, and, and Fiona are there, and Mike Eric starts doing the drugs right there in the middle of the concert. What kind of drugs he's doing? He's doing all of them. He is all the drugs. smoking the cocaine. Super he's, drugs. He, he's putting the acid in his butthole. He's doing everything, man. And Fiona's like, what the hell? And she's, he, he's all just like, oh, come on, we're celebrating. And so he is just high off his ass. And so he can't go back home because he still lives with his sister. And so he stays the night at Fiona's place and he gets up early because he got drugs all over his Motley Crue shirt. So he puts his shirt and his pants in, in their brand new washing machine and he breaks it <gasps> because there is cocaine all up in his pants and the cocaine gets jammed up in 
the washing machine, so they have to go to the laundromat. And there at the laundromat, Fiona's like, what the hell? There's there's cocaine in all of my clothes. And she starts throwing the cocaine at it. He's like, you ruined my best bra with your cocaine pants. And that's right when a cop walks in to the laundromat to do his laundry. And he has all his cop uniforms. And he catches Fiona throwing cocaine right in his face, in Mike's face. And that's how she got arrested. And this has been brought to you by the 4N6 Fanatics Improv Generator <laughs> website. <laughs> I just told it to generate some topics and character was 1980s rock star location was laundromat and situation was getting arrested. So thank you for in six fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> Motley Crue was the eighties, right? There's no way it wasn't the eighties. We, we are 30 seconds into the episodes guys. And we've been recording for half an hour. <laughs> so let's start oh, this train run, moving. Run, run yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Lip uh, is in school. We find out uh, he's in college. Uh, Fiona has a probation visit and a job interview, and we find out that Mickey, a friend of Ian's, they're just roommates, is mm. living here now. They fucking. Uh, and we've mm. seen and he's somehow guy. worse than everybody else. Like, yeah, this guy I hate was this guy. In the last episode. Yeah, that's Mandy's brother. Yeah, it's Mandy's brother. He was he was in last episode to do the hit on. Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. 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 Thank you. Yes. I'm guessing he's also a junior ROTC guy by the way he behaves. Yeah, I can see that. Um, it's never explicitly stated that him and Ian are are, are fucking, but they're they're fucking. They, they totally fucking. are. Yeah, um, and he's got like that that over aggressive in denial about being gay type of mentality, like that attitude. Yes. Like, and he's, he's just uh, overcompensating. That's the word I'm looking for. He's mm-hmm. for seriously overcompensating sure. with his aggression. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell your boss you have AIDS. Yikes. Yeah. Anyways, meanwhile, whoever is taking care of Frank, I don't think we, do we get a name for this character at any point in this episode? We that, do. It is uh, Sammy. Name. That's right. Sammy? Okay. That's right. But that's, his, that's his daughter. Yep. Yes, we find out Sammy, presumably the oldest Gallagher child, is taking care <laughs> of Frank at Sheila's. She trades a BJ for health care. The American. <sighs> that hey, was this, so uncomfortable. This wouldn't happen if we had a single payer system, just saying. Yeah, Over and in- you know, honestly, I, I, I feel like, look, man, I'm just being pragmatic here. That's, a, that's kind of a steal, man. I mean, like, dude... <laughs> Wish I could pay for fucking some of my hospital bills with a BJ, but I mean, depends <laughs> Lord, on, be... I mean, depends on how much you value your time, Vic, and your skill. I think it's funny because he's it's saying this while things. eating a banana. <laughs> <laughs> totally not, totally not intentional. I just realized I haven't eaten any fresh fruit all day, so <laughs> or vegetables. So. <laughs> Over at university, Lip drops off his littlest brother when his roommate's girlfriend makes a. Very aggressive pass, and also admits to having sexually assaulted him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Missed that. Uh, yeah, and what the hell is up with all these girls just throwing themselves at Lip? So. Like, shit, dude. This is like the third or fourth one. Ben does does Lip's dick taste like White Claw or something? I mean, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Not at this time. This is still 10 years ago, so it's uh, for Loco, but after they pared it down... Um, but I actually do have a, I had a theory about this that I couldn't, couldn't wait. And so I, I actually mentioned it to Jafar when we were together the other day. Lip is the guy that incels think exists. (laughs) He is that guy who is, he, he's bringing nothing to the table. He's a jerk to every woman he meets. He's abusive. He's disinterested. And yet every woman he runs into is throwing themselves at him. Often to the detriment or the ignoring other guys around them who might be, you know, more interested in them. He is the fake incel idea of the guy who's out there who doesn't actually exist. Amanda here is such great people that when the roommate walks in and sees her topless with his roommate is like thanking Philip for breaking them up. (laughs) Fiona's parole officer is Regina King. If you guys didn't clock that. Yeah, that was cool. 
I watched I, Friday like three weeks ago. I've never seen a Friday. <laughs> you know, Ben, that's not terribly surprising. She's also fantastic in HBO's Watchmen. If you haven't watched that, do that. That show's excellent. Oh, really? Oh, no, I haven't seen so that one good. yet. I saw the original movie and haven't seen the new reboot. It's not a reboot. It's a sequel. So we learned oh, wow. a bit here about Fiona's arrest, narcotics. She has to go to Narcotics Anonymous. She was in jail at one point and had an office job previously. And she has 30 uh, days to get a new job. And she's feeling hopeful because she's got an interview today. Mm-hmm. We see William H. Macy here in a bit more detail and the makeup job. Damn. Yeah, he looks yeah. like he's about to die. Sammy throws a, a Bible at him and tells him to take a look at this. <laughs> Great so it says circle your favorite psalms. Well, yeah. she's like clearly preparing for his funeral. Yeah. And then he goes and lights the Bible on fire, um, <laughs> which I was not a huge down. fan of. But it's also just like Frank is unable to accept like, hey, maybe a lifetime of excessive binge drinking might have caught up with me. Um, It, it looks yeah. a little more serious than that, though. It seems I was, like he's dying. He does. So it's never actually the BJ doctor doesn't doesn't address it. And it's never actually addressed in the episode what he's dying of. So, Ben, I'll hop on her. What the hell happened? Can't explain. But I got the van. Well, I'm not going to be boring and say liver failure uh, <laughs> because it's liver failure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's liver failure. hundred percent. Yeah. What I'm going to say is, in fact, Frank got incredibly drunk and, shocking no one, passed out in a snowdrift. A snow snow what? Snowdrift. I I don't know what that is. I'm from Texas. I see snow like once every three years. So a snowdrift is where a bunch of snow has blown together into a giant pile. Um, Uh, You'll also see them where, like, hey, it's been plowed together and so there's a big pile of snow. Um, And he passes out in it. And he gets pneumonia. And being unable and unwilling to go to the doctor, he just drags himself back to the alibi, coughing up both lungs, um, (laughs) ignores it, and keeps drinking, um, and starts to go into multi-organ failure. Uh, So he has ignored his pneumonia to the point where it is shutting down all of his organs, and he is now... Everything is, everything's broken. All right. So we're 10 minutes in here and we finally get a tease of the titular storyline. Carl is in detention and he is making a shank. Now I've got a question for you guys. I have an answer. Have you guys ever been in detention? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any idea of how, like how many days, how much time collectively? Oh, like total? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, a lot. Probably collectively like 30, maybe 30 days worth of detention. Under a week collectively for me. I I did not get caught often. I'm just curious because I got detention one time. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and I got detention because I had homeroom and me and another friend of mine didn't have any work to do because we did our homework already. And oh we were playing, if you guys know the game Dots, where you just make a 10 by 10 grid of dots and then you draw lines. And the goal is yeah. you make a line and then if, wow. you can, if you can close in a circle or a square, you can make another line. And the goal is to, like, make a line where you, you can close a circle or a square and they can't. Yeah, core memory unlocked. I remember that playing that now. So we were just quietly playing Dots in the back of the room and got yelled at for not doing our homework and the teacher didn't believe us when we said we didn't have any because you always have work to be doing um and gave us in class in school detention um so i think we had to miss uh miss a lunch ben you are just one innocent little unicorn over there <laughs> i'm not innocent i the follow for. the rules <laughs> there are rules for a reason and i follow them and that is why I don't like watching Shameless, because they don't follow <laughs> any rules. <laughs> oh, my God. So what they do to this poor teacher who is watching oh, them in, de- in detention, I feel so bad. Because for those of you who didn't watch the episode, they dose this teacher with, as Bonnie puts it, a couple hits of acid. <laughs> yep, that's, that's and yeah. We 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 have a break before then, but yes, 
Yeah. But you're fair. How much is a couple of tabs of acid? It's <laughs> a lot of acid. You shouldn't do more well, like, than one tab dollar of wise. acid for any reason. Oh, oh, actually, I talk about this because they clearly did not do their their word problems in math class because three tabs of acid is not a fair equal trade for the, I'm guessing, at most 20 Zoloft they bag. Like, three tabs of acid, much stronger supply of drugs than 20 Zoloft. So, yeah, and so I'm just like, uh, did she just like casually drop $300 worth of drugs in this teacher's coffee? No, a tab of acid is not $100, Ben. That's prohibitively expensive for drugs. But regardless, Zoloft is is very cheap. Uh, Acid is significantly more expensive. Three tabs of acid is definitely more than... 20 or 30 Zoloft. Listeners in the Discord, let us know what the going price of. <laughs> <laughs> this is our best running gag. Um, okay, so <laughs> after they dose the teacher, we learn that Lip's concern for Mickey's relocation. We have a, it's kind of like a mail order bride thing. They kind of allude to her, like her father selling her. Um, at a couple points yeah. for, for huh. several hundred dollars. And she's got a baby, and she knows all this buggery won't be sitting well with her or her father-in-law and <laughs> threatens to tell. As as we lear- as I learned on last episode, buggery is sodomy. Yes. yes. Is that the name so... of the episode? <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what? I think that might be. <laughs> also, um, here we have, okay, Mickey just has had a baby. He doesn't care. Um, he wants nothing to do with it. He's like actively anti even knowing this baby's name. And this mixed with everything we've seen previously and some of the parenting we see coming up in this episode. And also just like lip clearly hates his roommate's girl girlfriend and is still like, I'll leave Liam with you. I, yeah. I I wrote a note here, just like, how can all these people be such bad parents? It's making me cry. Like, <laughs> there is not one person, like, actively taking care of a child in this entire show. And it makes me so sad. And it hurts me very, very badly. Um, oh, man, you gonna be okay over there, Ben? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's 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 tough, man. So we cut over to Fiona. She is now getting a interview selling couch covers. Those plastic things that your grandma put over all of her uh, furniture back in the 70s. And she tries to hide the fact that she was a felon, which if I'm remembering my stint as a manager at a CVS, lying about that is a felony. Lying about committing a felony is a felony. Well, not disclosing it when you are, are supposed to is a crime, if I'm recalling what I was told. I don't know if it's actually a crime or if it's it's just... It's probably not a felony, because a felony is actually a very specifically defined type of crime. A felony Hmm. is a crime where the minimum sentence is a year in prison. Not jail, Hmm. prison. Because those are separate (laughs) facilities with separate goals and separate Mm -hmm. duties. So... This (laughs) This <laughs> means if Fiona is a felon, that we have a time skip that we missed because she must have spent at least oh. a year in jail. Or the show or got felony. She was wrong. charged with a crime, or she got charged with a crime where it was up to a year in prison. Maybe she didn't serve a full time. Maybe she pleaded down, like time wise. Then she would have had a misdemeanor and not a felony. When you plead down, you get convicted well, but, of a different crime, and you are no longer a felon. That's how but that works. A lot of people don't serve their full full time. Yes, a lot of people don't serve their full time, but we're talking minimum sentence, which means you're eligible for parole after. Like this is this is the stuff that you don't get around. This is the st- Martha Stewart spent a year in jail as a felon. Because that was the minimum sentence <laughs> before parole was available. Like there must have been a time jump. Or this show disregards the law, which, I mean, 50-50. Either way, it's... <laughs> I will say the kids yeah. do seem older, like more than just a year has passed. Yeah. Um, 
So I would believe that there I, was a time. I jump, don't think beyond. But a, we've got no way of actually they, knowing yeah. until the end of the show, probably. Until we ask I don't Laura. Think that house survives. Yeah. I don't think that house survives without Fiona. So there's no way she was gone. A Did you notice year. there's a ton of holes oh, punched in the wall that are new, by the way? There's like all oh, kinds of damage to the house. <laughs> they've they've been more yeah. and more each each season. After this, we learn that the woman taking care of Frank believes him to be her father. Also, she makes him a fried steak, a fried chicken steak smoothie. Chicken fried steak. Chicken Mashed fried potatoes. steak smoothie. Yep. All in the blender. Yep. How's how's your smoothie doing, Vic? Your, your traditional. Oh, it was delicious. You finished that yep. smoothie? I guess it's Podcast been, been, been oh, like yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah, your Mango traditional magic, pre-podcast um, smoothie. Yes, mango magic, no mango, sub coconut, sub Splenda, and with a multivitamin. Yep. You do this uh, every time we record, delicious. regardless of the hour. I don't know what it is. I, I just I feel like I can't do a podcast without a smoothie. <laughs> I'll be I'll be real upfront about it. Uh, a smoothie sounds delightful right now. <laughs> we cut from trying to take Frank his smoothie to. The Bible is on fire, and he is gone and collapsed on the street, trying to make it to the alibi. <laughs> he seems completely unaware he's he's in the state. He's, he's dying. In. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I got a question: Have you guys ever had a bar that is like your go-to place? Yeah. Ben and I have been regulars well, at a bar before. Bar? What was the name of the well, bar? What was, we did was the name of your spot? The bench, the bench. That's awesome. And then yeah, the karaoke bar. In oh, Ferndale the karaoke we went place. To every week for like a year, where the bartenders knew us and, and we knew all the other regulars and stuff. Before we decided we didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Why did we stop at that bar? That. <laughs> I didn't go as many times as you did. Um, it was just every. It was like a day of the week. We went on karaoke night. Yeah, and it was like convenient around work. It was the Austin bench last bird week, is the one I, I was a regular I at for a while. Drove by my. Um, Oh, nice. I, I drove by my old uh, bar that was a hangout spot because I lived like d- literally across the street from it. It was this place called Mr. Tramps. And uh, ah, man, I miss that place. <laughs> Every Wednesday they had Hearthstone night back when I played Hearthstone. That's Damn. Fun. That's such a spot. Anyway, yeah. Did they print cards for Hearthstone so, yeah. or were we all just playing on laptops? No, it was all on the app. Yeah. Okay. That's still fun. So Lips roommate's girlfriend wants him to, what's her name? Amanda. Amanda. Amanda wants him to pretend to be uh, her boyfriend so that she can make her parents mad, which he seems okay with. And then we get Fiona <laughs> trying desperately to get home because she has to be home by six. The trains broke down. She misses the bus. She doesn't have enough money for a cab. I know this gave you anxiety, Ben. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and plus, when she tried to get home in the before her curfew for her house arrest, like I don't know. I've never been to Chicago, but this just seemed on point the scene where she asks the train workers you know how, how long is it going to be and they're like yeah we're working on it and there's just four fucking city maintenance workers just standing around fucking off <laughs> well but also there's there's i i've been in situations where it's like this guy is probably like a turnstile guy and there's somebody under the the subway right now and he's just like i don't know like my i got told don't let anybody on the train i've got no hmm. idea yeah we then uh, find out that Carol did get uh, did have a kid, and Kevin isn't allowed to see it. Yes. Oh yeah, the mother-in-law. Yeah. The- so <laughs> the the process worked. Uh, also, <laughs> we find out later in this episode that V has twins coming. That's what it sounded. So Kevin is about to have Possibly three triplets. kids, one of whom he can't see. I don't know how many kids V has. And, she just refers to yeah. the girls, plural. We also find out yeah. that the alibi has diversified. <laughs> yes. They They're running a brothel running. upstairs. Yep. <laughs> ah, Which that's... Nikki is a co-owner of. Yeah, he seems to be yeah. the, the pimp. Again, that makes no sense to me at all. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Like, why in this day and age do pimps even exist? Like, the girls are more than capable of, of, of getting their own clientele. I it's a assume. very like, difficult what, what does a job, Vic. Actually do? Is it, though? It ain't easy. <laughs> they they have I have it on very it. good authority oh, that pimping ain't the easy. Pimping ain't easy. Uh, listeners in the Discord, let us know. Have you ever worked <laughs> as a pimp? <laughs> so, <laughs> if so, what are the local rates in your area? 
uh, just following up, <laughs> collecting economic data on the underworld as we do. Anyone who's listened to me rec- on any of my podcasts knows this is purely academic. I really just want to know <laughs> the price of things. It's how my brain works. I'm not sorry. Yeah, I'm sure you've got a spreadsheet for it somewhere. <laughs> I will when we get some listeners. Ben, go ahead. Ben. We then cut over to Ian and Mandy. Ian is bringing over some old clothes because he noticed mm-hmm. that I believe it's Svetlana's baby is just in a onesie. Like they do not have any clothes for the baby. Yeesh. Yeah. When she brought the baby over, did you guys get a look at that baby? That was the creepiest prop i mean it was very obviously a prop baby but oh my god it was so creepy like its eyes were just like man they didn't even bother like it had these googly eyes going on it was just like it was the freakiest looking prop baby i've ever seen it was terrifying (laughs) <laughs> it was worse than the twilight baby man it was creepy <laughs> we also find out that mandy is still hung up on lip yep. and we also have mickey insulting ian who apparently is now a erotic dancer and mickey is totally fine being the pimp to his wife but is too proud to toot himself uh <laughs> when a guy tries to pick up both him and ian he gets very very aggravated and refuses to do it mm-hmm. what did he say the name of the club was that was did he say it was the fairy tale it spelled out t-a-i-l oh, yes I yes, think... they're in Boys Town. Yes, it's though. a fairy tale. We uh, go over to Lip, who is making taquitos and meatloaf for dinner with Mandy, an American classic. Now, hold on. Now, hold on. I'm sorry. I know I keep sidetracking this episode, but but this was the biggest piece of discontinuity. They said they had meatloaf for dinner. There were two pans, you know, ketchup. You don't think it's actually meat. There were not two pans. Okay, there, there were two, two pans, pans, but there were both taquitos. No, one was there taquitos was no meatloaf. and the other was, was all meatloaf. Taquitos. No, that because was not I meatloaf no, in that Vic, second pan. because I, I said the exact <laughs> same thing and had to pause. No, if you have meatloaf and taquitos for dinner and you fail to mention the taquitos, that is not something that happens in reality, dude. Everyone gets excited for taquitos. <laughs> Carl is talking about how he's in love, and we've had our our D storyline that we haven't touched on yet. Deb is also crushing on a guy who seems significantly older and is, like, Mm -hmm. interested in an age-appropriate girl that he works with at his pizza place. And Deb is distraught that the guy she likes might be liking somebody else. And Mandy's like, oh, I'm going to teach you how to be toxic. The cycle continues. Uh, Then, yeah. And then we see Ian is now tooting, so he's bringing a <laughs> lawyer up to a hotel room. And... Get up the local lawyer convention. Yep. And then we have Fiona and V are drinking wine. Well, except Fiona is supposed to be drinking for V, who is very, very preggers. And this is where we find out that Fiona was banging her boss's brother. Steve is apparently <laughs> gone again. We cut over to one of my one of the few bits highlights of this episode for me is Deb trying to mean girl this Seema and being very bad at it. So she <laughs> calls up the the pizza place and it's just like, skank! And the girl who's answering the phone is just like, <laughs> who are you trying to talk to? Is it this girl or that girl? It's like, the new girl, Seema! Call, call for you. <laughs> yeah. and so I, I, on, let me go get her. I liked that she was just over it enough where she's just like, I'm not going to instantly hang up on this person. No, I will properly transfer the the, the incriminating phone call. It's like, which skank are you looking for? Yeah. <laughs> There's skank options. Oh, yeah, the hotel room. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, where Ian and Mickey rob a lawyer. I really you know, hope I this comes back to bite them in the butt. He just robbed a lawyer. <laughs> right? And blackmailed him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, and uh, Deb is stalking Seema almost gets hit by a car was that you vic Me. yeah i was just like oh oh fix gonna get his point yep. fix gonna... oh yep. no i was waiting for it i'm like oh come on <laughs> came so close not quite sheila gets home and is unsurprised by everything and Ian. i noticed that in the opening credits joan cusack was listed as a special guest star so i'm thinking that she actually has been gone for a few episodes okay mm-hmm. 
I did not watch the credits. Yeah, so this is like Sheila's big return. Yeah, we learn a little bit more of that soon. But before then, Ian goes for a run, and we learn that he has dropped out of high school. Dropped out of high school, and I'm pretty sure he's, I don't know, I think he's on meth or cocaine. It's ain't, it's ain't, I think cocaine. I don't know. I don't know much, much about the drugs. But both Fiona and Lipt seemed concerned about him, about his change in his attitude. His and he's just super high energy. Yeah. Yeah, Let's go exactly. For a run he wants to go run 6 a.m., guys. Yeah, and he's got, <laughs> he's got all these great ideas for starting an MMO company and all sorts yeah. of shit. So. Yeah. Yeah. He reminds me of – so where Jafar and I went to college, there is a very good – television production program and so there were a lot of people who you know learn camera operation and sound mixing and like the actual production side of tv and i knew so many people who were always super excited to be like all right you know everything involved in making a tv show i have half an idea for a tv show how about Mm -hmm. i sell you my half of an idea and I get like 50 50 on it. And it's like, <laughs> so I do all of the work, and yeah. your half baked idea gets you half of the profits. It's like, I'm just an ideas man. It's like, that is nothing. <laughs> That's not a thing. Yeah. Debbie goes to Carl for help. Carl is determined to get back into detention. Fiona tries to start up <laughs> daycare again, but isn't trusted because of the drug charges. And then we go back to Joan Kuzak, who says some shit on par with last episode. So when she showed up, I had originally written in my notes, let's get weird with it. And then what we find out later is weirder than anything we would have come <laughs> up with. It's yes. true. So that- we find out she ran off with a guy called Roger Running Tree. And I wrote immediately underneath it in my notes, I guarantee he was Jamake Highwater, who, if you know, Jamake Highwater was an Italian man who pretended to be a Native American and was went around Hollywood pretending to be a Native American expert on stuff. Is this the guy from Voyager? Yes. Yes. Yep, that guy. <laughs> uh, and uh, so he apparently akuchimoyed all over Sheila, and <laughs> she was unable to find the bones of his ancestors. Uh, <laughs> just going to play in some pan flute behind all of this. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Sheila's, I love she says, like, I turns out, like, he's less Native American than I am. Yeah. She says some stuff that made me cringe. She says some stuff. Yep. <laughs> and bad. he's on the uh, run for claiming false reparations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it does seem that while, while she was on sabbatical, Sheila found a place with a bunch of, I'm guessing, impoverished actual first nations children, children and wants to yeah. start adopting them yeah that was strange and well, that seems like that's her motivation for wanting to hurry up and get married to frank because, yeah, because it makes her seem married, more like a stable to person to adopt people yeah. Yeah, and i'm guessing thing. that this is stemming from okay yeah i'm guessing this is stemming from whatever trauma happened with why karen and jaime are not around oh right yeah also yeah, jody's not context, here anymore Nick. Yeah. The reason that that was a whole thing and why that's shitty was because those rules were made that make it very difficult for non-married people to adopt at the same time that mm. gay marriage was not legal. And you yeah. know who typically yeah. would have trouble conceiving a child? A same-sex <laughs> couple. Yeah, no, I've got a whole I've got a whole rant about this about how like who straight people who fight the gay marriage and friggin' adopting a kid. I'm like, I argue that on average gay parents are better parents than straight parents because there's no way a gay couple accidentally has a kid. You know? You never hear about a fucking gay couple getting trashed one night in Vegas and stumbling over to the adoption agency and drunkenly for filling out paperwork and forgetting about it. No, that never fucking happens. Jafar, have you ever so, been drunk and filled out forms? Actually, you know what? Of all people, <laughs> would, would get drunk and fill out forms. Have I ever been <laughs> drunk and filled out legal forms? No. <laughs> Be- so, Vic, in things you might not know about me, I don't know if we've talked about this on any pod I've recorded, but I'm a wedding officiant. Um, I'm a- what? Yeah. That's random. Uh, uh, it's a thing that actually I think I did while I was drunk in college. Um, <laughs> so maybe I have. <laughs> um, 
but I, I do have like actual legal paperwork that I did when I was sober to be able to do weddings in certain states and stuff. But yeah, I've done, I want to say 15 weddings. Oh, um, yeah, shut the over fuck the years. up. No, no yeah. really. Yeah. Are you serious? No, ranging from like uh, a couple of acquaintances wanting to just like get married in a park with like their friends um, to like full on big ceremonies, speeches, the whole deal. Um, uh, yeah, it's just something that okay. I, I like to do because I love love. And also officiants well, are you know stupid uh, fucking expensive. If you've never had to pay for officiant services, getting a officiant outside of getting married at a church is typically like a thousand dollars, which is absurd. So I do it for a beer usually, well, but we have the beer after the paperwork, Ben. When I got married. So. It definitely didn't cost that much both of the times I got married, but both of those times were at a... Well, one was at a courthouse, the other yep. one was... Okay, anyway. We're not gonna yeah. Well, now we get so. to Jafar's favorite part of the episode, because yeah. Lip comes back to his dorm and finds a giant schedule painted, printed out by Amanda. She has used all of this week's printer credits. You know, I'm the reason we had printer credits at Central, right? <laughs> I do know that, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. Anyway, I just say I freaking I freaking love Amanda. I she's my new she's my new shameless crush. Sh- shameless crush. It used to be, it used to be Veronica, but after last episode with the weird motherfucking shit, I don't know, man. It's Amanda, I need an Amanda in my life to to schedule my bathroom breaks and my BJ breaks for. Me. I've got some bad <laughs> news for my predictions, Vic. But we'll talk about it when we get there. Oh, you don't think Amanda's gonna make it? Yeah, I okay. don't think Amanda's gonna make it. <laughs> Um, yep, so we've got that, we, yeah. we, Lip's entire week scheduled out to the five minutes, which is insane, um, including the 15-minute BJ break surrounded by the aforementioned two five-minute smoke breaks, So that it's and then a bathroom break. So it's five-minute bathroom, five-minute smoke, 15-minute BJ with a little heart, and then five-minute smoke. <laughs> That's amazing, man. I... I... I I want to well, schedule like that for my life. One, I, I am incredulous about more. Would you want to go to the bathroom after? Yeah, you should. You probably should for hygiene reasons. So, yeah. Well, I mean, you want to <laughs> wash up, right? But that's just polite. Mm. Um, you want to wash up. <laughs> but also, five minutes for a bathroom break is not enough. Emphatically not enough. Five minutes for a smoke break is pushing it. And also, the smoke break both before and after, I think someone feels pretty strongly about their BJ skills and maybe should have that (laughs) checked. Because that's a bit much. Especially for someone who claims to be a virgin. (laughs) So. Virgin in air quotes. Yeah, a uh, Garfunkel and Oates virgin. We then find yep. out that Mandy's boyfriend is hunting Lip. This motherfucker is huge. This guy's like six foot tall. Looks like Terry Crews' little brother. <laughs> yep. So Carl tags a bunch of lockers to get back into detention. Misspells his own name, which I loved. Seems on brand for Carl. Frank's daughter comes home to Sheila in her old wedding dress, which she's trying to get taken in. Um... She and uh, Frank's daughter is going to be a bridesmaid, but Frank is almost dead. So they call an ambulance. Mickey and his wife are still at an impasse about existing in each other's lives. Debbie mm-hmm. steals a snake. Mandy's boyfriend yep. finds Lip's dorm, finds Lip's dorm room somehow, sees that he's at his econ class and assumes he's just going to find this classroom, which doesn't have its location listed on the schedule on a college campus. Good fucking luck. I am good at directions and knowing where things are, and it is a fucking esoteric nightmare to find a classroom the first time. Yeah, there were some some liberties taken this episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, you just ask, where Over is your at- dorm? This guy makes you fill out a visitor's form. You walk to the door. <laughs> um, <laughs> walk to a room, open the door. Oh, snap, guess what I saw? Mandy's boyfriend slapping Amanda and then finding out he's an econ. Over at Narcotics Anonymous, Fiona is on Indeed. When she gets maybe a job lead, it's hard to tell. I thought this was sarcasm, but it might not no. be. Okay. No, she gets oh, she gets sent over me. like, hey, maybe you can do some tooting. Um, 
Yeah, the 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 narcotics anonymous uh, counselor there tries to pimp her out. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure 100 percent that was that was what was happening there. <laughs> it's like, oh, you got me a job lead. That's so thoughtful of you. It's not hooking, is it? It's just, just the look she gives her. It's just, yeah. hey, it pays, it feeds my kids, and it's like, oh yeah. god, yeah. Oh. This is why we need UBI, um, right? Right. Anyways. UBI? Universal, universal basic, basic income. income oh right yeah of course yep i yep. will go on that rant another time but mm. we go back yeah. to carl and bonnie who have been in three minutes of this episode so far i wanted a bottle episode <laughs> with these two that's what i when i read this description i'm all like <laughs> bottle episode let's do it i love it when we hit a bottle episode on last time on nope nope there's well, just, we also see just how stupid carl is this episode well because i mean Yes, Carl. He gets himself sent back into he gets sent back into detention, which Bonnie immediately sneaks out of. He could have just like <laughs> hung out outside. Yeah, for, and then they wouldn't have an alibi. He's young, then. inexperienced. He's yeah, and he just wanted to. I'm pretty sure he wanted to impress Carol. That's the girl's name, right? Yeah, he wanted Bonnie. to impress Bonnie. her with how Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie. That's right. Carol, I was thinking Carl. Carol. <laughs> yeah. He was just trying to be bad in front of her by mm-hmm. misspelling his spray painted name. <laughs> Paramedics come for Frank. He refuses treatment. We, yeah. Sheila moves up the wedding, starts making phone calls as Lip <laughs> gets away from Mandy's boyfriend by using the power of racist cops. I do, I do love how nonplussed everyone is in the school foyer there about Lip just getting his ass beat in front of everyone. It's just like Not no one even got time, up from I'm the sure. table. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, okay, Lip is like, he was trying to sell me meth. The guy is actively trying to assault a guy um, in front of two yes. cops. Like, yes, he is not, he is not a, he's not a genius. <laughs> no. Uh, Bonnie and Carl have skipped. We then see to... Bonnie and Carl in an alleyway. What? <laughs> I had just said that, Ben. <laughs> I don't know. You are on a uh, crazy gotta... lag for me. I... Yeah, same here. Yeah, it's it, the video is lagged, but the really? audio seems to be on point. Oh, see, I've got it backwards. Both... His his video is fine for me. Oh, weird. Let's just continue. Yeah. Driving on. Yeah. Magic of editing. Um, did we get to Debbie in the pet shop yet? Yes. We yeah we did that a while ago. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I I've been running. I, I just wanted to recap. ask. Well, I just wanted to say Debbie in the pet shop. Do we think that snake was a prop? Or was that a real snake? That was a real snake. I think it was a prop. You think it was a real snake? <laughs> I think it was a real snake in the cage. They, yeah. I'm just glad they didn't use CGI. That that, that made me happy. I, I think it was a prop because there, you know, there's some really amazing, talented prop makers out there. Like I didn't even know that in Star Trek Four, the whales were fake. Those were prop whales. <laughs> anyway, I, I need to rewatch Star Trek that. Four. Bonnie and Carl yeah, skipped home, out of detention. Shot. Bonnie and Carl skipped out of detention to rob a store. Bonnie's got a gun. It is just Bonnie and Clyde. They aren't even going to try. Fiona tries to get her old job to make her eligible for unemployment. It does not go over well. This was a very like tense and serious moment in this episode. I was not expecting. I was expecting some kind of laughs with the boss coming out and bitching out. Fiona, it was not funny at all. It was extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> mm-hmm. Carl and Bonnie rob a bodega, and that's a first kiss meet cute story I never want to hear in my life. Well, also, we um, find out that uh, Bonnie tells Carl, oh, don't worry, the gun is fake. The gun is not fake. And she mm-hmm. shoots the TV in the bodega. So we are uh, we are going up from just robbery to armed robbery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Carl found someone worse somehow that could be the subtitle of the show somehow someone terrible finds someone worse somehow someone terrible back at the i think i guess the brothel we find out that mandy's boyfriend beat her up um, yeah yeah another uncomfortable scene that mickey refuses to do anything and then we get about my, anything. yeah and then we get my one hero of the episode seema who deb put a live snake in her car Mm-hmm. comes out <laughs> peeling out finds deb and just comes at her with a bat just like i don't care that you're you know 12 i will destroy your life 
And it's just like Deb, you should have never taken advice from from Mandy. Mm-hmm. Now there was a there there was a point. Now when Debbie put the snake in Seema's car, she left a note on the windshield saying, "If you fuck with me again, the next one will be poisonous." This irked me because this is one of my few pet peeves. Venomous. Yes, Venomous. thank you. <laughs> Yes, poisonous. I mean, now I I am not an English major at all. <laughs> like I barely fucking speak my own language. But yeah, poisonous is when you ingest something that has poison, and it venomous is is a bitey thing. And here I was thinking I was going to sound really smart explaining this, and I can't even word properly right now. Yeah, bitey, venomous, ed, poisonous. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, then we find out that Sheila has brought the alibi to Frank. Um, this scene, and this scene got me right in the feels. Until I thought this was so the, sweet. the two barflies start talking about Barack Obama's birth certificate, and I'm just like, "Yeah, oh, this is sending me back ten years." Yeah, that was the that was, but just the thought of it is what really I thought it was so sweet. And like, I brought the alibi to you since you can't go to the alibi that. That scene, it, that, I mean, of all the things, that one got me right in the field. And I thought it was very We see sweet. Frank mm-hmm. is drinking an O'Doul's because he, even <laughs> though he keeps insisting that he's going to the alibi, he does know he can't drink. Oh, you know what? I didn't clock that. So that I think that definitely does mean that he's got liver failure, probably. It's probably the simplest uh, I mean, there's a handful of things, but liver failure, yeah. So, uh, Fiona yells at some guy. This is Mike, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Or Eric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or both. Slash Eric. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's the episode. So need Steve to come back and get, get Fiona's life back on track. <laughs> um, I got my predictions ready. I also have, we're, we're halfway through Shameless in number no of way. episodes rolled. Yes. If the, the goal was to watch it in eight, this is four. So... Dude, we've been, we've been rolling high, and it doesn't feel like we're halfway, because there's 11 seasons... We have not been rolling high. We've been rolling low. Have we? Okay. Huh. I have been Feels rolling, like been rolling high. 3d6 plus 4. Yeah, no, I know. Plus one, 3d6 and 1d4. Um, but that's about to change because it's time for a new rule. Oh, no. I, I am instituting a new rule mm-hmm. to last time on called the Mercy Dice. <laughs> how this works is one of our hosts in this case me says we're adding the mercy dice to the dice roll which mm-hmm. it adds another d4 oh, to the pool it adds my big d4 this guy's a big old boy <laughs> it's like an inch and a half tall d4 now one of you can veto the mercy dice but the other one can veto the veto and allow the mercy dice to go. So that's your vote on new rules. It, it's b- baked into the rule itself, then. I hate how fair this is. So I am instituting the mercy dice for, for this show going forward. To make it go quicker? Is what yes. You're yes. I am adding uh, a D4 to the dice roll to make it go faster. I want to veto it, Ben. Go, you go ahead and veto my veto, because I know you're going to. So. No, I'm not, I'm not going to veto it. <laughs> you're not? No. You're not going to veto the veto? No, because... We've we've got the system. Even oh, trust God. Oh, ben, there you no. are with the rules again. Ben, no. Even though I'm not I'm having, even rules. though I'm not enjoying it, we're following <laughs> the rules. Oh my God, Ben, you are so lawful good. <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to I keep my this. brand. I, I love this show. <laughs> it is it is so fucking horrible. I like it. <laughs> okay, well I'm rolling. And that's a big one. I just rolled. <laughs> I just rolled max. I rolled a twenty-two. Whatever, you rolled it. You rolled a three, and you know it. <laughs> well, you know what? We we have to keep this patented system as what's the word I'm looking patent for? Patent pending. Yes. Pending patent uh, pending. We need to keep it as. Um, we need to maintain the integrity of it. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> Ma- maintain the integrity of the testing. All right. Yes. Well, I rolled a twenty-two, which takes us to season six. Episode seven. We skipped a whole fucking season. Well, we were always going to. It's set up. It's set up to watch eight episodes of an 11 season show. We were going to skip some seasons. 
Okay. So we're at season six, episode seven, Pimp's, Pimp's Paradise. Paradise. What the fuck? Carl takes over the Gallagher house and turns it into his, air quotes, crib. <laughs> Frank also returns to the house with Queenie. Ian and Caleb attend a wedding. Hey, Frank's still alive. Frank, still alive. So, yeah. if I may read the IMDb description, Carl struggles with Nick's absence, taking over the Gallagher home and remaking it as his, air quotes, crib. <laughs> Frank and Queenie rule the house, and Debbie returns when she's let go by Erica and Tyler. Interesting. Okay. I don't know most of those names. Yeah. I didn't know that we had seems- a Nick. That seems to be the way with this show, which is why, for the third episode in a row, I am naming three characters we're never going to see again. Lincoln, what are you doing up there? Guessing. I guess no one's coming. I have seen into the future. You ruined the prophecy. My daytime prediction. We never see Mike again. I had written Eric and crossed it out, whatever his name actually was. We know who I'm talking about. (laughs) Evening, we never see Amanda again. Aww. Prime time, we never see Mickey again. Really? Oh, okay. That's interesting. And then, since we're at the halfway point, I will go over my previous predictions. My predictions from the pilot are we meet the mom at some point, possibly via flashback. Still up in the air. Fiona and Steve break up at least three times. We're at two right now for sure. There might have been a third in there that we missed. And then someone from the pilot is killed by a cop was my prime time prediction. Not looking good for Carl. And then (laughs) the list of characters we will never see again. We still haven't seen any of these characters. Little Hank, Adam, Ethel, Christopher, Patrick, and Karen. Oh, yeah, Karen's... Well, we've seen Karen twice, but uh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, my daytime prediction, Bonnie goes to jail. Solid. We might not see it. It happens. Uh, My evening prediction is the brothel gets shut down, and... Seems mm -hmm. likely. My primetime prediction, Fiona thinks this is her rock bottom, and it's not. So it's going to get worse It's going to get worse for Fiona. It is currently... Did you want to go over your predictions, Ben? I, I can, if if you would like me to. Yeah, go for it. Um, I didn't know we were doing this, so... <laughs> find That's, I said it, like, three minutes ago so that you would have time while I was languishing. Well, they're just all on different pages at the end of each episode's notes. Oh, okay. From my pilot, uh, we eventually get a new dryer. Frank loses his disability. And two of our characters don't make it to the finale. Mm, I think Frank definitely lost his disability. I'd say that's, I'd say that's confirmed. Where the heck? Close enough for me, anyway. Gets my vote. Uh, every time we see Fiona, there's a new guy. Frank uh, does get a job at the Alibi. It doesn't seem likely. And uh, Hank gets Carl arrested. Carl has miraculously been jail free, even though he's <laughs> done, done attempted murder. Yep. <laughs> on that, uh, Ma- Mandy gets revenge on Lip. Uh, It seems like she's still hung up on him, so I don't know. Uh, I said the family briefly ends up teaming up with Patrick to take on somebody else. And uh, Steve leaves to rejoin the bourgeoisie. That might be why he's gone. Yeah. So, uh, moving on to my predictions. Um, My new daytime prediction is that during the opening, when we... uh, It seems to be the, the reoccurring gag that someone talks to the camera and says, hey, where the hell were you last week? I'm going to say that uh, we, the three of us, are going to land on an episode where someone's doing that, that we have no idea who the fuck it is. That's that's a good uh, prediction. <laughs> <laughs> my evening prediction is someone's going to get thrown through a window. And my primetime prediction is we're going to see someone in a neck brace. I don't know who, but someone that just seems like on brand for this episode. And going over, I don't have all of mine, but I do have my first pilot episode prediction of every episode we're going to get crime, violence, and nudity. So this time, we got definitely got crime. We got armed robbery by the by the miners. Mm-hmm. Uh, we some got violence. some violence. Definitely got some violence with the Down. What's his name Mickey. Yeah. The, oh yeah, we got a few of them. Mm-hmm. And nudity we got in the first five minutes of the show. So 
good to go there. <laughs> All right. Um, pending predictions are someone's going to pee where they shouldn't. Um, now, I did. I, my next prediction was someone's going to be in jail. We're not confirmed whether or not Fiona was actually in jail, but I think specifically I said that. They said she some, would go back to jail. Her yeah, probation but my officer prediction, said back to jail specifically. Yeah. I think that counts. I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I specifically said there was going to be an episode where the person spends their entire episode in jail. So I'll, I'll leave that one up in the air for now. Still haven't had anyone hit, hit by a car. We're still in the same house. I, I predicted that we have moved to a different house. I'm pretty sure Ian got kicked out of the Marines because he's got the uniform and he's got a new job now. I don't know, we'll have to get the confirmation from Laura on that one. And my prediction from last episode was Veronica's going to have a baby. Hey, do I get bonus points if they're twins? <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't claim it. I did not. You had, you had to say so that's where we time. are currently. All, all right. right. Well, with all that being said. Yeah. It's time to thank Ripe. Hey, Ripe. Thanks for letting us use Goon Squad as our theme music. We appreciate the hell out of it. In fact, uh, they haven't announced a tour date near us yet, but if... I see one. We're going, hundred percent. For sure. Uh, and if they are coming to your town, you should go because they're fantastic live. From Didn't what I've were, seen on they're YouTube, they're making a stop in Ohio. Yeah, but that's Ohio. Like, yeah. Well, one of the I three of us made a road trip to Ohio. I would drive to, to Chicago <laughs> before I drove to Ohio that's for fair. a concert. I mean, even oh, if it was, anyways. Well, I mean, no one goes to Toledo. So it's not really a concern. Um. Yeah, so thanks, right, for letting us use Goon Squad. Go see them on live on tour this summer. They're going all over the country. You should check them out. And thank you to you, the listener. You're the reason we come back here every week. If you like our podcast, please leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook. And if you do, we'll give you a shout out here on the show. And if you didn't like our podcast, you know, just keep that shit to yourself. And feel free to join us at the Last Time on Listener Lounge on Facebook. Uh, password is Wahapaher. And join us on the What Happened Here Discord for us and all of our related podcasts. A lot of good conversations going on over there. Haven't had to kick anyone out yet. Nope. That is not a challenge, dear listener. <laughs> and we will see you next time on Last Time On. Oh,